Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up just a general exam. And I think once you set it up, you can see to play around with it, set it up however you would like to do it. I'm just going to choose one of my master classes so I don't mess all my students up. So this is our Blackboard. If you're using Blackboard, the home page looks like this at the moment. And I'm just going to go down here. Now what you would want to do, um, decide where you want to put your, put your exam. And online courses, I use the weeks, of course, but this is what a blank tab would look like. Now you can do this a couple of ways. I kind of found this to be the easiest way to do it. So under assessments, you see it where it has test. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. When you click on that, see it says create a new test. That's the first thing you're going to do. And that's what I that's what we're going to do. So now I clicked on it. Now you got to give your test a name, uh, whatever you want to call it. And so right now my class, they're about to take. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. You can say exam two, uh, you know, whatever you're going to name your exam. This is what they're going to see to click on to start the whole thing. Now down here, it allows you to put instructions in if you want to. What I would encourage you to do, if you do instructions for a test, this is a Word document. If you want to make out some instructions for them, how everything you want them to see, type it in a Word document and save it. That way you always have it. And this is a standard one that I use. Uh, I say something about complete the following by midnight. But what you can do is copy all this. And um, you can do control C if you want. And I should say this now. Uh, if students are going to use Blackboard, tell them to either use what's called the Mozilla Firefox browser or Google Chrome. Uh, I'll probably send that to you in your email with this video. So you copy this, and I'm using Mozilla. I did what's called Control C. Just push Control down on the keyboard and the C at the same time. And then you can go right here where it gives you an uh, opportunity for instructions. And you do what is called Control V. You just push the Control key down and V at the same time. And see now you've put that in here and this up here gives you all the options if you wanted to change the color of the font um, if you want to underline italics this bolds it over here you notice that i put no backtracking allowed you can either change the see over here you can change how big you want them to see it like that um, anyway you can go from there but that's the instructions and there's another way you can do this that i have found to be a little bit better but so you're going to scroll down um, there's another opportunity here. Now, this actually said description. You can put here if you want. See, I put all this. If you wanted to also, you know, put just this part of it. This exam has 40 questions or any kind of instructions. That's where you can tell them also if you want to. Uh, there's no cheating. Um, the FBI is monitoring all of our exams blah blah but uh this is a description i kind of put the whole thing there and i'll just usually here i'll just put how many questions it is and how long the time of it is just to give them an opportunity to see it all right so that's that's where you start you're going to hit submit now it says uh our exam is created see so you're going to hit okay um, and then we're going to go back to that tab. I had it under number nine. Okay. Anyway, so now you've created your test. So what you have to do is you go back under test and then you're going to pick it here. See there, there it is. Exam number two, lymphatic. And now you get to set up all the little parameters. Um, I used to do this, show the description before they begin the test. That's fine. Just so they know fully what you expect of them. Right here it says show instructions to students before they begin the test. You can do that also. 
Open the test in a new window. I would say yes. That just opens a new tab for them. Gives them a little more room. Make available to students. I would say um, yes for this, and I'll show you what you can do. Add a new announcement for this test. If you click yes here, it will actually send them an announcement when it's open. Um, I do that sometimes. This here gives you the ability, if you wanted to, and, and I don't do this, if you click the multiple attempts box, it allows you to either unlimited, or if you were to click this one, you can select how many times you want to give them to take the exam. So I probably would not check that one. Um, don't worry about this. Okay, force completion. Now what this means, if they're taking their exam and something goes wrong with the internet, it will close out their exam. Okay, and meaning if they've done five questions out of 50, it's going to turn it in. I have started to leave that one um, unchecked. So it gives them the opportunity if something happened with their internet service and it lagged, they can go back in and finish the exam. Here's where you set the timer. So you click that little box. You can pick however long you want to do it. I think 60 minutes is a good uh, time limit. Um, auto submit means that it will turn them in for them as soon as they're finished or you can leave that off to where they have to turn it in once again I kind of leave the auto submit off I want to give them as many options if something happens and their internet lags or anything like that so um, and it's up to you if you if you click this box and you click that box if something were to go wrong with their computer at home and you need to make sure you tell them before you take this exam, make sure you're comp if you're using a laptop that it's charged, have a reliable uh, internet service. Don't go to the IHOP and eat pancakes and try to take your exam with their Wi-Fi. Don't do that. But um, if you check on and force completion, any sort of trouble at all, it will turn it in. And I just have got over the years, I've just decided... This is not allowing them to cheat. It's just giving them, if they got kicked out of the exam, they can still go back in and finish it. Because um, sometimes that will happen. Blackboard will completely close out. And you'll have to go back in and reopen it for them. Or if they only got one or two questions in. Um, and it's up to you. So if you click those buttons, it will automatically, no matter what, turn their exam in for them. Now, here's the part where you get to see, you, you want to display when it's going to show up. Um, however you want to do it, being online, I usually choose midnight, but here's today's date, the 30th. Um, this means it would open up at midnight tonight. Um, if you want to set a specific time, you tell them, I, okay, you're going to be, you have the availability to take this on this date and only have it open for two hours. You can even do that. But this is display when it's going to open. And this one here is how long you're going to allow it to stay open. And it's called the availability date. And uh, let's say I'm just going to leave this open for a day. Um, I would not do a password. That's just uh, that's another step. And then here is the due date. Now, um, what I figured out with this is uh, I always pick midnight. You know, I have right now the availability date and the due date. Now what you can do is you can leave the availability date, you can leave it open an extra day if you wanted to. That's for people that miss the due date, but you're going to give them a little extra time to turn it in if you want to, you don't have to. But then you can assess points, and I'm going to take so many points off, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Uh, it's up to you. You can The due date and the availability date can be exactly the same. That just means they're no longer going to have access to the exam. Um, in fact, see this box here? Do not allow students to start the exam if the due date has passed. If you want to set a hard deadline, you click that, they can't take it after the due date. That's up to you. Um, include this uh, test in grade center calculations. Uh, since you're going to be doing a different grade book, you don't necessarily have to do that. I just leave it checked. I don't think there's any problem there. But um, And then down here, look, this is uh, if you want them to be able to view their exam, 
it gives you options. Do you want it as soon as they turn it in, which I would not do that one. Uh, one time view on a specific date after the due date, after availability end date, which is what I usually do because now in our courses, we give them a chance to look at it. And what that means is after the test closes, they can go back into Blackboard and click on their grade and see what they missed. Um, you don't even have to set that look. It allows you to leave both boxes. Now, um, empty, I should say. Um, well, I, I, I believe it will. Now, this is how the test is going to be presented all at once. I probably wouldn't do that. I would do one at a time. I would prohibit backtracking. That means they can't go backwards. Okay, it makes them only go forward with the questions. And here, randomize the questions. And then watch, it should let me, it may make me check that box. Okay, there we go. So now we've created an exam. See, here are the instructions. Um, and when they click on it, see, there are the instructions. And then down here in the bottom corner is when they would start it. So the next part, now that you've got it set up, you've done all this, you want to add questions to your test. So see up here where it says edit test, you click on this. Now, it also allows you, if you wanted to, to edit the instructions and the description, if you want to. But um, here's some, uh, now, the upload questions is only an option if you have a set from a textbook. I wouldn't worry about that. But you see here where it says create question, and then here are all the different possibilities. So if I click on this, well, let me pick one, sorry. Um, so here's multiple choice. Boom. You know, question title, you can actually leave that blank. It says multiple choice question. Um, what you would do is type your question in here. Um, there. <laughs> you would type in what day is today. And once again, you can do all the options. I, I try to, because I'm getting old, I make the make the font a little bigger you can change colors and all that it's just like a normal word document and then down here it gives you the options do you want to use numbers roman numerals i always pick letters um if you wanted to allow partial credit that means it's uh you can give them partial credit for half an answer i don't usually give those and down here it gives you the opportunity to pick as many uh, answer choices as you want. And you're going to type your answers here. So you put, oops, Monday. Uh, you scroll down to the next one, Tuesday. Go down to the next one, Wednesday. And then here would be Thursday. If you get up here and you decide, okay, I want to add an extra question, you just pick five. See, it'll go back. It's going to go back and add an extra blank. There's Thursday. There's Friday. All right, and that's a, just a general starting place. And then once you hit submit, now down here, it gives you the ability, if you wanted to give feedback, I would probably just leave that blank because uh, you're going to be going over that with them. I would leave all this blank. You can put some instructor notes they can't see in there. And it says either submit and create another or submit it. And there's our, there's your question. Um, if you exit out of all this, let me go back. If you go back to all this and you do that, you see um, if you want to add more questions, you go to edit test create a question. Um, you can even, if you wanted to edit this stuff again, see, you can hit edit there. It allows you to change the instructions, you know, submit. But uh, yeah, the edit test option, here's create a question. Um, if you want to do multiple choice, I wouldn't do multiple answers. It's kind of complicated. You can do matching. Uh, that's a little different. That's not that hard. There's fill in the blank. Um, down here is short answer, which 100% you'd have to look at it. 
if you do that. And then there's true faults, even that's pretty easy to set up. But if you want to do a fill in the blank, you type the question in here. What day is today? And then down here, it gives you, you can pick, look at all the varieties. Um, you can make it 10 different varieties. You can say exact match. Contains is more of a general um, term. It picks up the letters. Uh, pattern match is also like that. You know, you can do uppercase, you can do, you can give all the options you think they might give you. But if you do fill in the blank, um, it will sometimes count it wrong, even if they put it in. They just might word it differently. And here's where you can give all the options if you want an exact match. Same thing, you hit, oops, um, and I picked a billion options. <clears throat> I wish now I hadn't picked so many options. I guess, you know what, I can go back up here. I'm doing it the hard way. No, I can't. Oh dear. One more. Let's see, there's two. Now, I'm gonna hit submit. All right, so now we got two questions. If you want to assign points, because you see it automatically assigns 10, you click on this, and that's where um, you would put in. If you're doing, oops, if you're doing 50, que uh, 50 questions, you'd want to do two points, hit submit, and see it. Um, it changes that to two. You don't have to do that with every. Um, there we go. Question. You you can go over here and select the little boxes. And then where it says points, you can just assign it that way if you wanted to. Um, let me think of anything else. That's how you set up a general exam. I mean, you can always email me. Let me show you one other example. So let's say they've turned in, you've set the dates up that you want it open and closed. And you want to go in and look at the stats. So what you have to do is you select over here, it's gonna say something like full grade center, see that? And then, um, what was I using? This is our labs, so lab, okay, there we go. Um, so what you would do, you would find, see here's the title, and it allows you to edit the column, which I don't think you'd wanna do this because you use a different book, but that's whatever you, you assigned your exam grade, it's going to say it right there. But you go up to column, um, column statistics, and that's where it will tell you the grade distribution. It'll tell you everything. And also, um, view grade history, I believe, is it that one? No. Um, anyway, that'll, that'll tell you everything. That's a good starting place. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, I'll send you some more information in the email. Thanks.